and you are once again looking live at the Proton rocket with liftoff scheduled about seven minutes from now. Today's mission is to inject the Thor 5 communication satellite directly into geostationary orbit for Orbital Sciences Corporation and Telenor. Satellite will provide a wide variety of telecommunication services to Europe, the Nordic region, and the Middle East. We are approaching some final milestones before liftoff. Let's take a moment to talk about what's going to happen as the Proton carries its satellite payload toward orbit in this mission profile video. The following profile details the important events of the mission using nominal times. 1.6 seconds before liftoff, stage one engines are ignited and the Proton roars to life. 10 seconds after liftoff, the Proton executes a roll maneuver to align its launch flight azimuth to 60.8 degrees. 65 seconds after liftoff, Proton is traveling at a speed greater than Mach 1.5 and experiencing maximum dynamic pressure. The first stage is equipped with six gimbaled single chamber liquid propellant rocket engines that fire for a little over two minutes, propelling the vehicle to an altitude of about 42 kilometers. The four gimbaled single chamber liquid propellant rocket engines of the second stage ignite three and a half seconds before stage one separation and then burn for approximately three and a half minutes. At this point, about five and a half minutes into flight, stage two separation occurs. Stage three now propels the vehicle for the next four minutes. Payload fairing separation occurs approximately 15 seconds after third stage ignition. About nine minutes and 46 seconds into the flight, stage three separates from the Breeze M upper stage. 11 minutes and 20 seconds into the flight, the Breeze M now ignites for the first time during the mission. This first burn is seven and a half minutes long, allowing the Breeze M to insert itself and its spacecraft payload into a low Earth circular parking orbit of 173 kilometers with an inclination of 51.5 degrees. After reaching parking orbit, the Breeze M and its payload are traveling above the Earth at a speed of 7,505 meters per second or 16,788 miles per hour. From a parking orbit, the Breeze M will deliver the spacecraft to its target circular geosynchronous orbit by means of three additional burns that occur over the next nine hours. At approximately one hour and eight minutes into the flight, the Breeze M main engine ignites for the second time, beginning a 16 minute, 25 second burn. This will increase the apogee altitude to 5,000 kilometers and the perigee to 298 kilometers. Approximately two hours and five minutes later, the Breeze M ignites its main engine again for its third burn, this time for approximately 16 and a half minutes. This will greatly increase the apogee altitude to 36,790 kilometers. The perigee altitude will increase to 495 kilometers. About one minute and 21 seconds after the end of this burn, the now depleted additional propellant tank is separated. The orbital unit will now coast for the next five hours in the intermediate orbit. The fourth and final Breeze M firing occurs approximately eight hours and 50 minutes into the mission and lasts for seven minutes and 13 seconds. This burn greatly increases the perigee altitude to equal the apogee altitude, circularizing the orbit at 36,802 kilometers. In addition, the inclination is lowered to nearly zero degrees. At nine hours and 13 minutes after liftoff, the payload separates from the Breeze M. And we are getting so close to the launch. This is the exciting time. We're gonna tune in now to see what's going on in Baikonur. Attention, full two hour space batch. Launch live coverage is about to begin. <laughs> launch vehicle scheduled lift off time is 17 hours, 34 minutes local time. One minute 20 minutes has just been announced. And just about 30 seconds before liftoff, everything looks good. Beautiful day at Baikonur. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 10. Off of an 
an ILS proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan carrying the 4-5 communications satellite. We've just had liftoff and the satellite performs, or the launch vehicle is performing a roll maneuver. T plus 20 seconds into the flight. Engine combustion chamber is pressure is really the We're coming up limits. on the first event, right which is max dynamic pressure or max alpha Q. This is the point at Proceed which the maximum aerodynamic uh, load on the vehicle is experienced. It corresponds approximately to about Mach 1 and occurs at uh, 66 seconds after liftoff. As you can see, everything is going quite well. Launch vehicle engines operation is stable. We're now 60 seconds. Everything into seems to be proceeding nominally. Launch the launch vehicle heads in the easterly direction with a flight azimuth of about 61 degrees. We have first stage, first, second stage separation confirmed. Separation's a good one. Launch vehicle engine's performance is stable. It's a hot fire separation where the second stage actually ignites before the stages separate. All four engines are burning nominally. Other key mission milestones or marked events are coming up the next few minutes. Uh, the next one will be stage two, three separation at L plus five minutes and 32 seconds. 12 seconds later, the payload fairing, fairing will jettison. These are the critical milestones in, in the mission profile. Trey? Jim, thank you. A beautiful liftoff, clear skies. Everything worked out perfectly. Liftoff, certainly the most dramatic and exciting part of the launch mission. However, there is really a lot that happens behind the scenes to get to that one big breathtaking moment. Orbital CEO David Thompson talks about 4-5 and the mission from Baikonur. Okay, before we actually hear from Dave, let's take let's keep looking at these live pictures. We can just see a flicker of something that's still in the skies there, but it's almost out of our eye distance. All right, and now we will hear from Dave. Good afternoon. I'm Dave Thompson with Orbital Sciences Corporation. I'm delighted to be here at Baikonur this afternoon. We've got a beautiful Day this today we're all out looking at the uh, magnificent proton rocket at this historic launch site, uh, one of the most uh, famous in the world uh, in uh, the last 50 years for its contributions to the space program. We're looking to make a small additional contribution ourselves tomorrow with the launch of the Tor 5 satellite. This is a very important event for uh, Telenor Broadcast uh, Systems, our customer, and for us at to Orbital. This is our first proton launch, uh, and of course the first uh, launch of a uh, orbital-built satellite for a European customer. Uh, we're all uh, a little cold this afternoon, but uh, the skies are clear, and uh, we're hoping uh, for a great launch tomorrow and I'm very confident that uh, the Proton's going to do a great job for us and, and uh, so we're looking forward to it. Thank you very much. And we're back now with ILS's Jim Bonner. I mean, we saw the liftoff. It, from here anyway, everything looked perfect. Perfect liftoff, perfect day. Yes, everything is going very, very well with the mission. Uh, you saw a beautiful liftoff. Uh, six engines firing just perfectly. We're just waiting for confirmation of the separation of the second and uh, third stage, as well as confirmation of the payload fairing separation. Now we've got some milestones you said that are coming up. That's the separation That's you're speaking of? That's the separation of? of the stages, again, the second and the third stage, as well as what happens just shortly after that is the separation of the payload fairing. 
these are events that are uh, pre-programmed by the flight computer. Uh, the second stage actually operates with a uh, burn to completion. So it, it, it uses up all of its propellant so that you can give the, the maximum performance to the mission and uh, put the satellite in the best orbit possible. So we're just waiting for confirmation of that. The, uh, we have a, uh, there's a little bit of a delay between the actual flight telemetry that comes down from the vehicle. It has to be processed uh, at a processing facility in Baikonur and, and then uh, what we call stripped and shipped. The information stripped out and then shipped to various places uh, at the Cosmodrome. We have confirmation that the second and third stage has separated. We also have confirmation of a very nice separation of the payload fairing. That is great news, and you, you were looking at it and didn't think there was going to be a problem. It looks like everything worked out just as planned. Doesn't get much more perfect than that. Well, in what has become a tradition for proton launches, the local Russian Orthodox priest blessed the Thor 5 rocket launch team and the VIPs as you're taking a look in this video right now. Now, at the end of the blessing, we will receive a word from Kato Halsa, CEO of Telenor Satellite Broadcasting. Thank you. We have just received the blessing so Proton and Tor 5 is ready to go. We have been looking forward to this moment for two and a half or more years and everybody has been working really hard. The team from Telenor has been out here for a month preparing the satellite together with the orbital team plus all the support and help from uh, and supplies from ILS and uh, the Kronoshev team have made this event possible. Now. Uh, we are looking forward to the launch of Tor 5, which will enable Telenor to replace its old satellite workhorse Tor 2 and expand our capacity so that we can reach customers in Nordic countries and uh, Europe. So this is a very, very big moment for all of us. And, uh, for, for all the Norske tilskuerne og Norske deltagerne på launchfesten i På Fornebo ønsker jeg Tor 5 lykke til på reisen inn i Rommet. This is really a great And we moment. just received confirmation just moments ago that the separation was successful, everything going as planned. Yes, Trey, it is. Um, we've had a very good uh, flight thus far. And coming up uh, right now on the separation of the third stage from the Breeze M upper stage, at that moment of separation, the spacecraft will be traveling almost 7,200 meters per second, or 16,000 miles per hour, at an altitude of about 187 kilometers. About a minute and a half after that, the breeze end will ignite for the first burn. That burn will last for about five and a half minutes. We expect to get word on the breeze end engine shutdown while we are still on the air. Uh, but a little over three minutes after the shutdown, the vehicle is scheduled to be out of range and we will lose communications for about an hour and eight minutes. During that time, the Breeze M will coast for about 51 minutes before igniting again on its second of a total of four burns before injecting the 4-5 satellite into its geostationary orbit, Trey. All right, Jim, thank you.